Hello everyone, it is a very blustery yet lovely fall day in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri. This is Black Red Guard again. Now last week we discussed the first part of the mass work manual, if you will, of the Communist Party of the Philippines. So today we are going to be uh, reading and discussing um, propaganda and education work and organizing and agitating the masses. Now, for those of you comrades who do not know what the Communist Party of the Philippines is, it is probably the most advanced Communist Party anywhere in the world. They grew from a relatively small group in uh, the late 60s to a very large and very wide-ranging revolutionary movement touching and organizing people in all parts of the Philippines. So for our work as revolutionaries in the United States, it would behoove us to study the revolutionary movement in the Philippines and how they conduct mass work. So, propaganda and education work. Reading from the manual, here we go. <clears throat> Why is propaganda work important to our mass work? Propaganda work is important because through propaganda we are able to reach the broad masses, both organized and unorganized, in order to express clarify and animate the revolutionary analysis, objectives, and tasks at every period, stage, and place. In this manner, the party is able to unify the thinking, sentiments, and actions of the masses. Now, propaganda work is not reserved for a few specialists. This is conducted by every party unit and member at every opportunity that they are able to mingle with the masses. Conducting propaganda is important in order to draw the party closer to the masses and for the masses to be able to perform well their role in the revolution. I personally have frequently said that every time that you open your mouth as a communist, you are conducting propaganda. And I want to say it again. Every time you open your mouth as a communist, you are conducting propaganda because America is a deeply anti-communist society. So we're really not going to get anywhere by uh, talking endlessly about violence and gulags and a lot of the other memes that a lot of extremely online communists uh, enjoy discussing. That kind of turns the people off. So, back to the manual. In order for the content of our propaganda to be correct, it is necessary for everyone to understand the line, program, and policies of the party because these will guide our analysis of the facts. In order for our propaganda to be appropriate, it is necessary to be close to the masses. We will be able to draw from them the information which will provide freshness, scope, and relevance to our analyses. The content and style of propaganda must suit only the present level and tasks of the masses with whom we are collaborating. It is only by associating and integrating with the masses that the units of the party and army are able to provide comprehensive and timely studies and analyses of the conditions of the masses and the places in which we operate. It is only in this manner that we are able to give our propaganda correct content, that our propaganda carries and reflects the conditions, aspirations, and ideals of the masses and the people. It is also only in this way that we will be able to ensure that the calls, policies, and program of action which we are propagating are correct and have a firm basis. Our propaganda work should have three interrelated tasks. One, to expose the enemies of the revolution and to oppose their anti-people schemes. Two, to clarify the line, program policies, and the means of revolutionary action. And three, to analyze and illustrate the life and struggle of the masses. We expose to the masses the root causes of their problems and we show them who their real enemies are.
based on social investigation, we identified the principal representatives of the basic problems of every class, sector, place, and period. We analyze and oppose every scheme of the enemy to assert its reactionary rule and to suppress and derail the advance of the revolution. We also repudiate reformism, terrorism, and other counter-revolutionary ideas and schemes. It is also the role of propaganda to popularize the cause of the party in order for the masses to understand them, unify around them, and carry them out in their own actions. We expound on the basis of the cells and we also teach the means for carrying them out. Our propaganda illustrates the life and struggle of the masses in order to heighten their revolutionary qualities and to share their experiences in order to form a broad and deep unity amongst themselves and to develop confidence among them in their own strength. What are the means and forms of revolutionary propaganda? The basic means of revolutionary propaganda are determined by the mass line and the relationship of the general and particular analyses and calls. From the masses, we gather the concrete, particular, and fresh data and events which we analyze and bring back to the masses in a synthesized form in order to be useful for the practical struggle. Apart from the information derived from social investigation, it is also important to derive data from research and readings. This is me again. So, basically, in addition to talking to people, linking up with people, working with people, learning from them at your job wherever you go you should be striking up conversations and discussing politics and the concrete situation with the people you should also be regularly reading newspapers in your area watch the news have things to talk about with people if there's a new african or black paper paper and say in your uh, in your area for example let's say lewis we have the st louis american you should read it of course, most of these carry a bourgeois uh, respectability politics line, but still, it's good to have things to discuss with the people. If there are a nation of Islam members that sell the final call, read them. So, back to the reading. Propaganda relates to general objectives, tasks, and direction with the particular objectives, tasks, and means. The general line and calls may be the emphasis. But these are particularized according to the masses with whom we are working. The particular analysis and calls may be the emphasis, but these are related to the general line and tasks. It is necessary to attend to both secret and open propaganda work. In clandestine propaganda, we are able to conduct the broadest and deepest discussion and express the most advanced calls. According to what conditions allow, we give this an open form. In open propaganda, it is necessary to become creative in striving to balance the legal limitations with our task to reach the biggest number of people with the revolutionary line. There are many forms of propaganda which may be utilized and developed. Mass publications, handbills, mass meetings, group discussions, slogan painting, posters, comics, house meetings, play, song and poetry productions, dance, broadcast, video and films, and many others are commonplace. We must also create and utilize spaces within the mass media controlled by the enemy, such as enemy newspapers, magazines, radio, and television stations. In addition to being concrete, correct, and appropriate, our propaganda must also be effective. Effective propaganda is live, clear, and sharp because it is rooted in the actual life of the masses and uses their language. I want to emphasize the uses their language part. Let's be real. Nobody's going to read something that reads like it came from a Chinese cop, uh, communist propaganda poster during the Cultural Revolution. The combination of various forms also gives an exceeding effectiveness. So does the regular, frequent, and rapid addressing of issues which crop up in the course of mass work. All revolutionaries must use every opportunity con to conduct propaganda among the masses in order to clarify the objectives, plans, policies, and the tasks of the revolution and the masses. We must not allow any revolutionary to be separated from the masses. Everyone must participate in the practical movement, organize the masses, lead their struggle, 
participate in production, and take part in the joys and sorrows of the masses. Not to carry this out is a form of liberalism. Three, <clears throat> why is education work important to our mass work? Basically, the objective of propaganda and education work is the same raise the level of the revolutionary consciousness of the masses in order for them to participate actively and wholeheartedly in the revolutionary movement. Education is defined as the formal, concentrated, and systematic study of the revolution by the organized masses. Education work places their participation in the revolutionary struggle on a sturdy theoretical foundation. Education also develops the capacity and skill of the masses in order for them to carry out their revolutionary work and tasks more effectively. Providing education cannot be separated from the establishment and consolidation of mass organizations. If the masses are able to study systematically and regularly, this ideological and political outlook takes root among them which will guide their every action and the long-term development in the revolution their capacity and skill to carry out and complete more numerous and more complex revolutionary work will continue to develop and broaden. It is also necessary to propagate among the masses the results of the summing up of the work of the revolutionary movement, especially the positive and negative lessons, strengths and weaknesses, successes and setbacks. The masses must conduct a detailed study of the lessons from their own revolutionary experience in order to persevere along the correct path and to correct the errors as a result of the left and right deviationist lines. This will serve as a guide and a firm footing for the further strengthening and development of the revolutionary mass movement. The content of mass education is comprehended better by the masses when it is linked to their own revolutionary experience. 4. What are the types of mass education that the Communist Party of the Philippines provides. The principal types of mass education that we provide are the study of the special courses and the study of the general course. The special mass courses clarify the history, character, and revolutionary solution to the principal problems of the particular classes or sectors that we organize and mobilize. The special mass course for the peasant movement discusses the problem of feudalism, and the agrarian revolution. The special mass course for the workers movement discusses the union movement and the strike movement. The special mass course for the women's movement discusses their problems and their liberation. And the special mass course for the youth movement discusses the problems of youth and the correct orientation of their movement. Other special mass courses may also be outlined based on need, for example, the Fisher Folk movement or for the middle forces. On the other hand, the general mass course of the Communist Party of the Philippines studies the history of the Philippines, the three basic problems of the country at the present time, and the basic principles and task of the People's National Democratic Revolution. After the special and general mass courses, it is necessary for the masses to begin immediately the study of Marxist-Leninist principles. For example, we may discuss the basic attitude of a proletarian revolutionary in relation to serving people to criticism and self-criticism, to tasks and sacrifice, the basic principles of democratic centralism, collective leadership and mass line, social investigation and class analysis, and certain principles of dialectical and historical materialism. The mass courses, and especially the introductory study of Marxism-Leninism, prepares the advanced individuals to become candidate members of the party. Together with this, the masses are given education in developing, developing their capacity and skill in leading mass organizations, propaganda work, developing production, health, and medicine, culture, literacy, livelihood, sup, livelihood supplements, introductory defense training and security, and others as necessary. It is important for our mass education work to have a program for systematically developing the consciousness and capacity of the masses, the mass activists, and those targeted for recruitment as members of the party. We must make sure we allot some time for carrying out these education plans. This is one essential revolutionary work and task which we must not neglect. So essentially, 
this is a really good exposition and description and discussion of the importance of carrying out Maoist revolutionary political education in a correct way. This is not just the idea of filling people's heads with ideas, okay? You cannot pound ideas in the people's heads or force them to believe something. You have to patiently explain why we are Marxist Leninist Maoists, why we are working in these neighborhoods, why we constantly talk about and are building towards proletarian revolution. So something to keep in mind. Now... Organizing the masses. One, what are the two most important principles we must remember in organizing the masses? The first is to base oneself in and to trust the masses. This is the basic principle, the mass line, that clarifies the correct style in organizing the masses. It is necessary to allow the masses to learn to take action based on their own initiative and willingness to assume tasks. What the cadres of the party must do is guide the masses and not assume all the work. It is necessary to base oneself in and entrust the masses in order to allow for the emergence of the greatest number of people ready for tasks of the revolution. We must also remember that when the masses understand and embrace the objectives of the revolution and the formation of their own strength, they will become creative and persistent in their own actions, and leaders and activists will emerge from their own ranks. Let us not presume that only a few people can lead. Let us combat commandism and tailism in organizing the masses. The second principle is the solid organization of the masses for revolutionary struggle. What this means is the establishment of broad, sturdy, and closely knit organizations with a leadership that is unified and healthy and rooted in the mass membership. It is not enough to have only influence among the masses in order to advance the revolution steadily. It is necessary to organize the masses solidly in order to unify them sturdily and prepare them for all rounded struggle against their class enemies. If the masses are not organized solidly, their struggle will advance only up to a limited extent and they will persist only in certain conditions. Our objective is for the masses to become a sturdy bastion of the revolution. <clears throat> the leadership of the mass organization must be composed of the most reliable, most violent, and most respected leaders, meaning to say, those who hail from the basic classes and strata, who have an excellent record of humanity, who can be trusted and have a genuine concern for fellow human beings. It is necessary to unify them through collective study of the correct line and policies and to educate them in collective leadership of the mass organizations. The leadership will always remain healthy as long as erstwhile leaders, meaning old leaders, who do not develop, are backward, or are rotten, are replaced by fresh, progressive individuals from the membership. This leadership must be linked firmly with the mass membership, must consult them on important problems and decision making, and must rely on the unified will and action of the membership principally to carry out its tasks. Solid organizations can be formed only in the midst of mass struggles. What are the preliminary steps in organizing the masses? The first step in organizing the masses in the barrios, factories, communities, schools, and offices is to locate reliable contacts. Preliminary contacts may be products of mass work in other places, relatives, or friends or acquaintances, or those of other comrades, or those of a family of a comrade. Preliminary contacts will be formed into coordinating groups in order to carry out our tasks collectively. As much as possible, the preliminary contacts must hail from the sector to which we are giving principal stress. They must be honest, have a decent record of humanity, know a lot of people, and be enthusiastic in carrying out tasks. When in a barrio or neighborhood, strive to find contacts from the exploited peasants or rural workers. If there are none, the preliminary contacts may also hail from the middle forces, but at the earliest opportunity, we must allow those contacts who hail from the basic classes to emerge. Before we give them work, it is necessary to conduct a detailed investigation of the preliminary contacts, especially those who do not hail from the basic forces of the revolution. It is a task 
of the preliminary contacts to link us up with other individuals from the class or sector that we would like to mobilize. They could assist in the preliminary social investigation, class analysis, and preliminary propaganda among the masses. It is also their task to provide us with information on the movements of the enemy, as well as the unreliable elements in the area. In the countryside, it is also their task to safeguard the, community, the security of comrades while inside, as well as while leaving the barrio. We must not divulge to the preliminary contacts the overall plan for the area and the progress of the mass organizing. Although some or all of them may become part of organizations that will be formed in the succeeding stage, it is not yet certain it will still be based on their future actions. 3. Why must we establish groups and organizing committees? When do we form them? We must establish organizing groups and organizing committees step by step in order to select and train the mass leaders, to form the backbone and foundation of the mass organizations, and to launch the actions and struggles that the masses are capable of doing. In organizing the masses, we must follow the revolutionary class line strictly. In a typical farming barrio, those who may join the organizing groups of the peasants must hail from the ranks of poor peasants, rural workers, and lower middle peasants. In a fishing barrio, those who may join the organizing group must hail from the ranks of poor and middle fisher folk, fishing workers, from the ranks of the exploited peasants and rural workers, if there are any. We form the organizing committees in the sectors which already have standing organizing groups and in the various important parts of a given scope and where advanced individuals capable of leading mass organizations have already emerged. In the factories, committees, and schools in the cities, we may first form the organizing committee and subsequently form the organizing groups if we are able to gather the mass activists who have proven themselves to be reliable in other places. Under the leadership of the committee, the work of deepening the social investigation will continue, conducted by the organizing committee, the transformation of open organizations or the setting up of new ones, and the invigoration of mass actions and struggles. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit. How are the basic units of the party formed among the masses? Even at the level of the organizing groups and organizing committees, we must already begin to provide Marxist-Leninist education to the advanced individuals, we can already tell who are enthusiastic in accepting the ideological line of the party. We must continue to analyze the actions and the participation of the active individuals and whoever else displays, displays honesty, enthusiasm, and skill in organizing. We ensure that the mass activists are given systematic political education in preparation for the study of the basic party course. After a certain period of time has elapsed, Based on their record of actions and participation in study, we can recruit the most advanced among them and set up a basic unit of the Communist Party. How do mass activists emerge? Mass activists are individuals among the ranks of the masses who are active in revolutionary work and in advancing the mass movement. Numerous mass activists will emerge if the masses with whom we link and mobilize are encouraged to take initiative or assist in raising their political consciousness, are given concrete guidance, are aided in summing up their own experience, and are supported in resolving their personal problems. So this is something that I want to talk more about. You have to actually befriend and support the people. You can't just go in, going back to the political education session, trying to fill their heads up with ideas and then leaving. That's not going to work. You have to befriend. You have to get to know these people. You have to genuinely care for them. Because people can detect easily when you're full of shit. America is full of every scam, cult, reactionary religious organization. People are going to um people are going to initially be suspicious of you. You have a good line, but Americans are a very cynical people. So again, we have to keep in mind the specific character of the people that we're going to be organizing. And I am not going to talk about legal and illegal forms of organization because those will vary from place to place. So, um, in a couple of days, I am going to be reading and discussing these sections on mobilizing the masses, consolidation, and expansion. I'm Black Red Yard. Don't take any wood nickels. <laughs>